What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about the disastrous launch of Star Wars Battlefront Classics Collection. Look, this was a game that I talked a lot about, you know, leading into it. I thought, you know, this is a cool idea, and instead of just celebrating an anniversary, right, with like a Twitter post, you can make a, a relaunch. I don't want to say remaster, right, but you can put the game back out there, and hey, it could probably get some steam, not like the platform, but it can, you know, it could pick up, and hey, if this thing does well enough, maybe this is just like uh, another sign that hey a uh, battlefront still works now right and we can get like a battlefront 3 i think some of that i mean like there is appetite i think you can still tell there's appetite even from the launch but uh everything else basically has fallen apart right now ign did a really good article basically just taking a lot of the complaints that they found uh, you know others talking about and compiling it but it really does a good job i think of showing the frustration and just the i mean the word disaster is what everybody's using and it's fair now i do want to say you know because i tweeted uh, yesterday i've been kind of all over the place we won't get too much into it but i i did get a code from them i have a code for this game i believe on playstation i haven't actually i know i got the email um but i i can't play it i can't play it until maybe saturday sunday so um this is all my impressions of what i've seen from other people completely unbought you can't even say hey well you're paid off you got the code i haven't used it yet <laughs> so i guess they can maybe even take it away from me but no this has to be called out right um it's not a full price game it's $35, right? But the game, if the game doesn't work and the game doesn't add anything beyond the originals, then there's a big problem here. Now, and let me stay on that topic, right? So what do I mean by that? There's two reasons I think that this game had value in the first place, okay? The first reason is the multiplayer. 64, 32 versus 32, right? Like, that's a big deal. And, yeah, they're 20-year-old games, but they're still cool. There's still some value there. There's still fun to be had there, and you can play it, you know, with friends. Now, the cross-play, non-cross-play thing already kind of hurt that, all right? Actually, really hurt it. But I wouldn't say it's completely, you know, screwed over. I, I think there's still some hope there, right? But that was one big reason, I think, to get the game. The other big reason is preservation. And what I mean by that is simply, and I have seen this, and I agree with it to an extent, right? You have a lot of people saying, well, look, because the multiplayer doesn't work, and we'll talk about that in a second, because the multiplayer doesn't work, the original games, like just play the originals, there's literally no value here. And Again, I, I largely agree. I would say the other part to that, the one part I would disagree with, and on that preservation angle, I can still respect that, at least for you know trying, at least for putting it out there, that not everybody's going to do that, right? You look at like the modern game or somebody growing up literally right now, right? How many are going to bust out their original Xbox? Now, I don't know if it's backwards compatible, but even like say PS2, right? How many people are actually going to play Battlefront 2 on their PS2? Very few. Are there some? Yeah, absolutely. But are there a lot? No. And so putting a, and you know what I mean? That's that's what I would say is the second part of value to this game is simply keeping it around to just preserve it. But you know what? That second point becomes weaker and weaker when the game's not worth it, right? Like if you can't get on multiplayer, and I mean the you know the major tweet that's being shown around is it's hilarious. I honestly believe so. You had. It's not exactly 10,000. I think it's like 9,300 people, right? 9,300 people were trying to play it last night, and there's only three servers, so you have like 200 people. 200 people could play online. The other, the other 9,100, they just said screw you, and you couldn't do it. Um, and that, you know, that's the big tweet, right? That's that's what everybody's talking about. But again, that's actually why I like IGN's article because they go over the the aim thing, right? Aiming is really, at least from again what I'm seeing, I'll have my own video like I do want to talk about my own impressions and uh, my own opinion but that'll have to be you know a few days from now but the aiming obviously is something that people had a really big problem with the spawning system um, I even watched some battlefront youtubers that got it you know a few days early that talked about it a few days early that said you know in some of their heroes versus villains matches the the AI just doesn't know what they're doing they'll stand in the corner and, and really not do much so that scared me when they said it and then now you have this stuff where spawning is messed up up, the aim is messed up the uh the time system so sometimes it gets stuck at like one second you know a user said like that the match wouldn't end um it's uh like you can't have that right and then I, I mean here's the thing if you don't have that 
the only thing you have is the base game, which, yes, you can play. You know what I mean? You can play that originally. Now, you know, going to throw it out there. Not everybody's going to do it. Well, I've even seen you know, in the IGN article, they even talked about the single player stuff, right? Like some of the cutscenes I heard are missing. It's like, what in God's name? Because, like, truly, that's the only thing left that this game would have of value. And I think that would be a much harder sell, right? If you were just simply copying and pasting is these these are just ports right it's what aspire does and, and i mean look i know aspire is like a punching bag right now but they do ports and i mean like that's their thing and i don't think that's like a, a massive negative or anything that's what they do okay but if you just do a port right and you add nothing and i mean if this game really is added nothing now again the, the things they did add is the multiplayer which isn't working you know and and kind of putting it all together like having ventress and all that like you know having that kind of complete uh complete addition let's call it right okay there's a few things here and there right but when most of it's not working and yeah maybe it works down the line but right now it's not so all you have left is the the base thing which yeah you can play just you know originally you don't have to get this game but so you know what i mean if you're copying and pasting and you're adding nothing new to the conversation even at 35, which is a good deal. It's a good deal for two games, but two games that are 20 years old and two games that have not been, this is not a remaster. This is not a remake. There's nothing enhanced about it, right? It's it's just putting all these kind of content things together and putting the two games together, right? Is it even worth $35? Well, I would imagine the answer is no, right? And I mean, looking online, I, I just did like a quick, even like Twitter search. You look at, you just type in Star Wars Battlefront Classics Collection. The amount of people that have those words, you know, in their tweets at least, the amount of those people that are saying, I got refunded are insane. Now, actually, a lot of them are blaming EA for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, this is not EA's fault. Uh, maybe they thought it was EA because of, of Battlefront, but that's the generational thing, by the way. <laughs> so just to throw that out there. But no, you're, you're seeing, or at least I'm seeing, a lot of people doing refunds. So I think the game probably sold well, considering a lot of this stuff didn't come out until last night uh literally when people first started playing it the the early impressions didn't sound that bad the early impressions didn't get people ready for this now to be fair the early impressions couldn't really get into multiplayer because there wasn't enough of them right like maybe aspire didn't send out enough code so i'm not gonna you know blame them or anything but you're seeing it now and i do think the game was what you would probably consider successful in terms of say sale not you know not the launch the launch was not successful but the sales and i think the people that were actually going to play it i think there was a, a very good amount of them and uh now well now i think there's gonna i think the drop in players is going to be astronomical because i think everybody's just going to say nope not like we're not doing this right and, and that's good honestly to say like hey we've had enough of this kind of stuff i i totally respect so i'm still gonna play it like i definitely want to try it just to see like what the situation plus i i do love these games we'll just see if it's actually those games that they gave us so i'll have an impressions video up maybe like sunday or monday so you can hear what i think about it then let me know what you think make sure you're subscribed to the channel bell icon turned on and i hope to see you all on the next one